Rotary and the United Nations have a long history of working together and sharing similar visions for a more peaceful world. Today, we have 25 Rotary UN representatives around the world. I'm Helen Reisler, one of the five UN representatives of the New York contingent. Each year in November, our team plans and presents Rotary UN Day, where more than 1,300 Rotarians, UN officials, guests, and Rotary Youth Program participants from around the world come together at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. The program is designed to inspire and educate all attendees and to provide insight into the relationship between Rotary and the United Nations. This year, each topic is connected to Rotary International President Sekuji Tanaka's 2012 Rotary theme, Peace Through Service. Hello, as the chairman of the Rotary Foundation, it's a real pleasure to be here to celebrate UN Day, or Rotary's Day at the UN. Uh, this is something that's been going on for several years, but it seems to be getting more and more attention. Peace is possible, that's our theme. And certainly Rotary through its many, many programs, supported by clubs all over the world, is making a real dent in peace. We're also here uh, to celebrate the cause of peace. Much of the work that we do, all the service projects that Rotarians undertake, uh, literacy, health and education, microfinance, uh, the eradication of polio, all these efforts uh, work toward creating more prosperous societies, which in turn leads toward more peaceful, uh, more peaceful societies. There is a lot of opportunity that day for networking as well, where many project partnerships are developed between Rotary Clubs. There's also a separate morning program where interactors and rotaractors connect with each other and share their club projects. Here are just some of our presenters as they share their inspirational experiences. Dr. Mark Schreim will tell us about Rotary and Mercy Ships, partnering for disease prevention and treatment. His charity group operates the world's largest non-military and non-governmental hospital ship. This is the ship docked in Benin about three years ago. It's a converted Danish rail ferry, so it's about 500 feet long, it's eight decks tall, and at any one time there are about 400 people that live, 400 volunteers that live and work on the ship. Rotary and Mercy Ships have actually been working together for the last 25 years, since 1987. And what's happening in the future is that a strategic partnership is, is being formed in which vocational training teams from Rotary, Rotary will come onto the ship and will work with us in three specific areas. The first is training, it's disease control and training. We'll also be working together um, with you guys on ophthalmology. Cataracts are the first or second leading cause of reversible blindness in the world and we do a lot of cataract surgery. What happens to our Peace Scholars after they graduate? Professor Romano, one of our Peace Scholar graduates, who now teaches conflict analysis and resolution in Washington, D.C., will tell us his story. Today I was asked to think about, well, what was influential for you while you were a Peace Scholar and how is it translated into your work today? Which was a, which was a good question and I appreciate uh, the, the opportunity to think about it. And there were a couple things that came to one. One was the diversity of people that I got a chance to study with. So in Bradford is a huge program. We had more than 100 students from 40 different nations. And in my cohort alone, we had people from various backgrounds. And we heard about what some Peace Fellows are up to. Uh, Analia Ramos, who I studied with, does food security work. Some of you know her in humanitarian crisis. Um, Dinesh Kumar was a journalist who focused on conflict from India. Particularly what we've been doing is training folks from all aspects of society, politicians, police officers, um, I went there this summer, we did a training for uh, children of, um, whose parents are incarcerated and folks from all across society so that we can, kinda, we can create a common framework for discussing how to transform some of the issues that are underlying the violence in Hartford. But I want to say that I had the great honor of going to Hiroshima, Japan, as well as um, to various parts of India for my research. I later turned that into my um, PhD dissertation and I'm now teaching at the School of Conflict Analysis and Resolution at George Mason University. So, it's really come full circle for me in some ways because I have the um, ability to continue to do this community work 
And oftentimes communities don't have the, the funds to pay for this. And I'm also located in the university where I have an opportunity to reflect on that work and to engage our next generation of peacemakers. Rainy Hong kept us riveted to our seats as she shared her heartbreaking personal story as a surviving child of the trafficking industry. Today is a special day because I want to tell you how Rotary changed my life. And you will hear that, but first of all, I want to give you background information. I want to tell you a story. It's my story. A story of a young girl stolen from her family. A young girl sold into slavery at the age of seven. Not the slavery of history books, but the modern day system of slavery that traffics in human beings and human lives. My name is Ronnie Hong. I'm from a small village in southern India. I was stolen from my family at the age of seven. I was sold into slavery and taken to another state where I did not know the language. I didn't know anyone. I cried for my mom and nobody came to rescue me. I was at a place that I had no one to turn to except my slave master. What is human trafficking? You might ask, it is simply selling people for profit. Human trafficking equals slavery. We've all heard this quote, be the change you want to see in the world. That's what I'm here to ask each one of you. Be the change you want to see in the world. I had to make that decision. When it's difficulties, I didn't want to speak. But I had to make the decision because I wanted this world to be changed. I want the systems of slavery to be changed. And these are just some few examples of young people taking action. But what they came back to me is saying they need educational tools. And that is why I'm here to ask if I can partner with you. Because I was in the northeast part of India, very rural area. And guess who came to help me uh, give education and put on a medical camp? It was the Rotarians. The Rotarians came saying, we're going to help you put on a medical camp. And there we gave medical help to children who were sold and who were, who were been rescued. And never, they never received medical help. And we want to put a smile back to every victim who has ever been victimized by human trafficking. You are world leaders. Rotary is a leader in this world. So I stand here today as a survivor on behalf of millions of children. And I want to give you a short example back to why Rotarians changed my life. You heard my story when I was 17 years old, living in the United States, basically being homeless. And yet, the Rotarians gave me a college scholarship. The very thing I needed. And today, as basically a seven, being sold into slavery, being homeless at 17, today, as a special advisor to the United Nations on the global initiative to fight human trafficking. <laughs>